Okay, thank you. So we can start with introduction. Ms. Tut, you can start introduction, then Ms. Anissa, I introduce and Amin, then we can get started. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I've already introduced myself earlier. Um, I am a cybersecurity, information security, governance risk and compliance professional. Um, I have been under mentorship. I did make a career transition. I don't have a technical uh, background, so I transitioned from uh, public health. Um, and, um, you know, my, my education Help. So now I'm in cybersecurity, and um, that's it. I want to encourage everyone to follow our room, please. Um, share this room with your family members and friends. Anyone who is interested in making a career transition into the tech software industry, um, feel free to share with them and bring them in the room. Thank you, everyone, for coming. That's to you, uh, Anissa. Thanks, Ms. Toots. Hey guys, my name's Anissa, and I am relatively new to this group and really enjoying my time. Um, I am going to be transitioning a little bit into a project management role. Um, so working heavily with Ms. Tummy in terms of Scrum Master classes, um, things like that, enjoying her mentorship, enjoying the groups of people here that I'm getting to know. So I would definitely encourage you to take Ms. Tutu's advice in terms of following the YouTube channel, things like that. Um, and I think my one piece of advice is if you are at a crossroads in terms of your career, definitely take some time and you know reach out to professor tammy and see where you can take your skill set and pivot just like Ms. Tuss did just like i am um and you know take advantage of that uh opportunity so that's it for me on to professor tammy thank you miss anissa um yeah thank you everybody for joining our room my name is um timmy I go by Prof. Temi. I've been in tech for over two, two decades now. And um, I'm a CEO of Top Group Technologies, the IT company in Lago, Maryland. Um, we have this company now for over 16 years. I've been in tech all my life, hands on, and um, with, um, you know, bachelor's in computer science, self engineering masters, and cybersecurity masters. Right now, I'm working on my PhD on advanced, advanced um, security. So glad that you're here today. Like this mentioned, I mentor, I've mentor. i met over a thousand plus engineers now. And Ms. Tooch is one of the people I've mentored like five years ago. And they have their own network. So if you're trying to break into tech and you don't know what to do, you are confused, I can guide you. Um, you can check my ituniversity.com. That's my university for training. If you need online training, and if you need live one-on-one -on -one training in cybersecurity, Scrum Master, Cloud, any kind of cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and uh, you know different area of SQL analytics, let me know. I can also guide you. Um, we have some classes coming up on July 3rd. And thanks to everyone that came to the master class, the free master class on Saturday, yesterday. It was. It was wonderful. And if you're trying to break into tech, there are free resources on YouTube. Follow me on the YouTube channel. You'll see a lot of free training on Scrum, on cybersecurity, and all of that on there. And this room is recorded just for mentoring purposes, and they're also on, on YouTube. So just for mentoring. So you see a lot of things around career empowerment. And we also have these rooms every, every day. Uh, 5 p.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern time. And today, Sunday, is the popcorn style. We're going to be discussing um, online cybersecurity tips uh, to avoid scammers. So be prepared. Thank you. And I'm done speaking. I mean, you are next. Thank you for having me, Professor Timmy. I am just here to support. I'm definitely not an online cybersecurity expert. I'm just here to listen and support you um, as you support everyone else. So and I have some questions, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Amin is always supporting. I remember when I first came to Clubhouse, Amin actually really helped me. Um, she, she showed me a lot of the ways around, you know, and she's, she's powerful. So I thank you for all that you do, Amin. I really appreciate you. Um, Likewise. <laughs> thank you. C2M Christopher from Boston, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Tammy. Hi, everyone. This is Chris from Boston. 
I'm in business development in the staffing space. I make placements uh, in business sales, primarily in the Boston area, uh, within the IT uh, and um, healthcare disciplines. Uh, as far as you know, cybersecurity tips, I would have to agree with the mean that I'm not uh, an expert. However, um, you know, from my time being on the DAP and just kind of being uh, someone that's online a lot, uh, you know, I do have some thoughts around how to protect your data, particularly you know around you know logging into public Wi-Fi, passwords, things of that nature. So happy to be part of the dialogue, but yeah, uh, definitely it, it is not my uh, daily vocation. Uh, I'm Chris Boston. I'm done speaking. Thank you, Christopher. Thanks for always supporting us. Uh, Ayana, Ayana, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Ms. Timmy. Uh, my name is Ayana Smith, and I'm the founder and CEO of Circle of Opportunities, executive career coach, resume writer, and tech recruiter. Um, I do recruit for uh, cybersecurity professionals as well, and you know, always love to help people break into cyber. It's one of the most highly in demand and sought after career professional right now. So if that's the industry you're looking to get into, it is the right time for that. A lot of companies are ramping up cyber right now because ransomware is at an all time high and is, you know, kind of uh, going to be increasing a lot as well. So there's a massive need right now for cybersecurity professionals. So great conversation and great timing and always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Ms. Temi. Yes, ma'am, you are welcome. So thank you everyone for joining as well as my students and my mentees and all of us here, we, you are all welcome. And before we go on, I just wanna say happy Father's Day to all our fathers. I know it's Father's Day. Most of you took time to be here instead of being somewhere else where I know you go and enjoy Father's Day after this room. <laughs> And actually, after this room, we are going to Amin's room as well, discussing about Amazon. So thank you so much. We appreciate all the wonderful fathers. And even the single mothers that are doing everything by themselves, they are fathers and mothers. So we thank you all for all that you do. Continue to support the community. And I'm sure you will not labor in vain because you will reap the fruit of your labor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do. So today we're going to be looking at crime, cyber crime, online cyber security, and tips to avoid scammers. And that means we're going to be looking at best practices and what are the best things to do. Most of the, in the olden days, many years ago, we don't know anything about cyber. Everything is, is street, being street smart, being street wise. Um, we used to have war between countries. Um, we don't have, normally it's war, it's like cold war or warm war or hot war, it's war, okay? But now we don't have that anymore. Everything is gone online. If a country has an enemy, the enemy is not going to come physically to fight them with guns, with cutlass, with machetes, with knives. No, they go online now to hack them, to whatever they can do. Not only countries, now look at organizations, a lot of cyber criminals online, a lot of um, incidents happening everywhere. Look at that, look at the, uh, the Columbia pipeline, look at the, so many that we can even think about as we go, we're gonna discuss about them, you know? So there are crimes everywhere online, but as, as, as the, the cyber, cyber security and cyber is evolving, constantly evolving. Tech is constantly evolving. And I'll tell you pretty much the cyber security or cyber space is one of the fastest evolving because everything revolves around the cyber space. So when we talk about tech and we talk about online, everything is cyber, it's cyber, and it has to be secured. Our cyber is evolving. Are we ready to protect ourselves? Because now there's a lot of new gadgets going on. There's a lot of internet of things and different you know, keywords and slangs and acronyms everywhere about cyber, about, you know, cyberspace and cyber arena and, and tech, right? So as everything is evolving, are we also evolving with it? Are we protecting ourselves? Are we ready for this, for this jet age, for this age of cyber, the cyber age that we are getting into? Every day there's new innovation, there's new technology, there's something new coming out. As we are looking at new, cute, wonderful opportunities to advance our career, to advance our organization, our businesses as a, as a small business, are we ready? Are we secured? 
because one thing for sure is that it's the same people that put these technologies out that will also find a way to also exploit you in for some because not everybody will be some people are crim criminally minded but some people most majority of people are, are kind of not criminally minded but notwithstanding we have to be ready so today we're going to be looking at tips to avoid scammers so most of the time we are the ones that make ourselves vulnerable because we we take some things for granted and we don't pay attention to certain things okay we know that we have assets to protect online our assets are our can be anything from welcome amanda our asset can be everything talking about an organization let's look at an organization from an organizational perspective our asset can be anything from yourself okay first your employee that work for you all the infrastructure that you have set up um the building that you are in the project that you're working on all of these inner assets to an organization how do you protect them? How do you set up controls to protect them? Because if you, and there are different ways in which you can protect all of this infrastructure and people that work for you and everything. So when looking at the assets, the assets need not to be vulnerable. So there are different vulnerabilities that can make you asset to become vulnerable to an attack. So when your asset is vulnerable, then attacker can attack your asset, then you have risk. So the risk can now be different um, levels you know, you might have, uh, I'm not going to give you a cybersecurity class lecture, but I'm just going to lay, lay the background. I don't want to go too deep. So now when you are at risk, your risk needs to be managed. You need to do risk assessment and risk, manage, risk management in order to mitigate your risk. And there are different controls to put on those risks, maybe before the event, um, in the, during the event, after the event, what are the things that you need to do to protect your asset from being vulnerable to attack? So today we're going to be looking at those, those concepts. And this can also serve as a control to your asset to protect them. So we cannot be doing popcorn cyber. We just kind of lay the foundation and we can do, go from there. We are discussing online cyber security tips to avoid scammers. Most of the time, the first thing I'm going to try to look at is keeping your software up to date. When I say that, I'm not only meaning software that pops up on your machine. I mean, your systems that said, you, you have updates, you know, <laughs> you know, from X from Vista, right? Even though we don't have that much anymore. And then most of us will be like, I don't have time for this. It's gonna take my time. Then you leave it aside. These updates are very important. Um, these are new fixes. Maybe they found some bugs. They need an upgrade to security, upgrade to system. You need to, to make sure that you update your system. Every time your update comes up, update it. And when I say your system as in your computer, I also mean your system as in your mobile phone. So anything that you have that's connected to online need to be protected. Sorry, somebody's trying to call me. Everything that you have that is on connected to online needs to be protected. And so updates are very important. Keeping your, uh, your system up to date, okay, is very, very important, okay? And I will say something here as well. I'm not going to give you a, a security plus class, but I'm going to give you an example. There's a difference between updates from, I, from an iPhone perspective and Samsung perspective. If, an I, if you have updates from iPhone, iPhone, they, have their, they create their own patches. They create their own um, bug fixes. If they find any zero day attack, zero day attack means an attack that happens today and nobody has never known about that attack, okay? If that attack happens today, they will quickly find a fix for it and try to fix that vulnerability today. So when you see that update right now, Right now, immediately download it because they're trying to fix it. So that's an advantage for iPhone. But think about Samsung. Samsung um, and uh, Android, right? Android, a lot of manufacturing companies carry Android. So, so when Android creates their own patches, they will send it out to all these vendors. Before the vendors will get it and incorporate their own own um, uh, code into it and send it out for up, up, upgrade is already you already attacked. It's already like a couple of weeks down or even months. So I'm not selling for iPhone, but that is what I found during my research. 
So you guys, most of you are on iPhone, so you can't yourself lock it. I'm not an iPhone person. I'm not Apple person, but I'm on iPhone. Okay, that's another story. So keeping your system up to date every time is very important. I will stop right there and let people chime in. <laughs> okay. okay. I can just give one, th and I'm just starting to um, listen to the comments, so I apologize if anyone's mentioned this, and thank you, Tammy, for, for what you were mentioning about the up-to-date systems. I, I can't you know, sort of speak to that enough as well, that the importance of that, but just to chime in on just something, a tip of the title of the room about cybersecurity tips. So one thing I've noticed, and again, I apologize because I just came into the room and somebody mentioned this, but this is something that's big for myself. So I've been working remote for my company now for over a year, about a year and a half. And most likely I won't go back into work, but one thing that I have seen with some of my fellow, um, my coworkers is they are using their work laptops and they're used to, they're just being at home, they're using the work laptop, they're working remote and they're doing like, let's say they wanna pay a bill or do something. They're so used to using their work laptops in the home that they're doing personal, you know, bill paying and things just on their work laptop because it's just there. It's convenient. And one thing I will say, and this is just my own personal, that I do not use my work laptop for anything but work and on the network. So it's so easy for so many of us to just quickly pay like our you know, whatever bill, your electric bill while you're on there because it's convenient, but I highly encourage not to do that because that's how a lot of these data breaches, I for one work in data analytics. So that's very easy for somebody to hack into somehow my system if I'm on like Con Ed, you know, maybe not Con Ed, but some other, you know, website for personal use, it's so easy for them to tap into us that way. So just making sure, you know, we really try not to blend personal and business if we can on those work laptops. Just, just a high level tip I wanted to throw out there and I'm Amanda and I'm complete. Thank you so much, Amanda. That's so true. I always tell my students, don't use your work laptop for school. Don't use your la work laptop for anything. Keep it separate. Let it be separated because a lot of time, um, they, they are actually monitoring you for, for what you're doing on your laptop, for work laptop. I actually have a particular student that got fired for using the work laptop to do stuff. I told you, you can't download stuff on your work laptop because you have admin privileges. Doesn't mean you can do whatever you want on the work laptop. So that's a very good one. Thank you for saying that because at the end of the day, you will take that laptop and connect to their VPN, connect to the, to, the, to the office again. So then you carry your virus or whatever to the office. So just use it basically for whatever you're using it for and not for their own purposes. Thank you so much. Um, another thing is actually, another thing with most of people, most people make mistake about is opening suspicious emails. You have some emails that somebody sent to you, we call this phishing, okay? So, so, so they send you some email and they put a link on it and you don't, you are not even sure who that person is, that's social engineering. They're trying to, to impersonate and be who they are not. And then they send you a link and say, click on here and then you're gonna get whatever. Then you click on it, you're gonna get yourself infected. Your system is gonna get infected. So a lot of things can happen through that phishing attack. That's one. So be very careful. And sometimes they try to ask you, the, 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 the online website might look so much like a real, like let, let's just choose a generic example. Let's say Bank of America. They will say they are Bank of America. And then they look exactly like Bank of America. But if you look closely, you will notice that it's not the same. There might be a little mistake or something that is just off. You will know that it's not the same. So whenever anybody sends you a link in an email, don't click it. When you see that email looks suspicious, just delete it. Don't try to poke around and say, oh, let me just see if it's, it's what I thought. Don't think anything. Delete it and delete it completely. Okay? So this is how they can, you can avoid it. Don't click on any attachments or any, don't click it, just delete it straight and throw it in trash. Let it go completely. And um, so that's one thing. Anybody seen that before me, that kind of error? Let's, let's also share our uh, experiences with that. It's a popcorn star. 
I'm glad you mentioned it, Ms. Temi, because that's exactly what I was going to speak about as well. Um, recently, someone sent me an email and, you know, everything in my mind um, said that this really looked like a legitimate email from someone I've been in contact with, you know, more than a year ago, but we had lost contact. And it just, it really seemed very real, you know, on first glance, but you know, thankfully, um, I stopped and I paused and I said, why on earth would this person be reaching out to me? And I really started to assess the situation. And I was so hesitant to go into the email and maybe it was just God, you know, kind of really protecting me from what really was a phishing attack. Um, so, you know, pause, really assess and evaluate, you know, who's the sender? Where is it from? Who is it coming from? Why would they be reaching out? Pay attention to the subject matter before you open that email. You, I would say, even try to contact and know who's reaching out to you ahead of time um, before you get that email um, and open it, because that that would have been by all of my clients' information. You know, that would have been um, all of the, those resumes that people need to get jobs. You know, those are the important documents that you cannot afford to lose because of one mistake in an email. Um, I've seen it happen too many times. I've also seen in the case of employment where um, there are fake websites. So a friend of mine that lives overseas in the Middle East um, was looking to apply for, to an ESG um, company in the United States in Texas. He was of the belief that the website was 100% real. Um, and to be honest with you, they replicated a well-known corporation's website down to the letter. I mean, it was an exact replica of that corporate website, but they were scammers looking to scam people overseas to come to the United States to work, um, lying that they would receive a visa, lying that they would receive documents and be able to gain employment overseas. I'm so glad that he sent it to me ahead of time before sending over uh, $5,000 um, for the application process. And he said, can you check this out for me? And I said, this, this looks pretty real, but let me do some research. And sure enough, I found the real company's website and I informed their CEO. They had no idea that that you know was happening, um, but not surprised at the same time because that, that um, industry gets attacked a lot by scammers overseas. So just be very careful. Do your research when you're applying to companies. Make sure it's a legitimate company. Make sure that you know you're checking that company's information and that you can verify who the CEO is. That they're on LinkedIn as well and other platforms before you make mistakes like that. I, I've, I've seen that one too many times. So you know, just just pay attention and do your research. This is Anissa, and I actually want to chime in on that as well, Ayana. Um, you brought up a really great point in terms of, you know, verifying the content that you're looking at. And um, I can tell you that for me as a job seeker this last five months, um, the last couple of months I've been working with Tata Consultancy, trying to get something going with them. And on their website, they actually have a banner that talks about, you know, we'll never ask for the specific type of information. And you can actually plug in a code from a job uh, ad to verify that it truly did come from TCS. So, uh, you know, it, it is getting so hard to your point to, you know, do a quick glance and see what's real and what's not. So great points, Ayana. Thank you. This is Anissa and I'm complete. Yeah, that that's crazy because like um, when I transitioned into the cybersecurity um, field and after like when I finished taking Professor Timmy's course and I was looking for jobs. And, you know, you want to put your resume out there and, you know, we have these websites. But what happens is once you put your resume on, like, Career Builder or Indeed, um, Monster, a lot of people will start calling you, reaching out to you, and you just don't know who or where. And so you have to look at the logo. You have to look at their signature. I mean, you'll get these cut and paste 
it's just you just don't know and it's weird because it's like you didn't even ask for all these attention like you'll get jobs that you didn't know you didn't apply for but they can see your i think they're selling your name in the database or they have access to see the you know your name and your resume so even if you go on let's say you go on the filter and you say um you don't want your resume to be visible you're still going to get people that you don't know right so i've always just i will just look at the link and i will go on that website i would um see if they're a real company i will go on to linkedin to see if there are if i can look up the, you know the, about us the employees the staff and just look them up you know and it's just you know you just never know especially if you're like in a point where you are looking you're searching you know you're losing sight i just want to encourage people don't lose sight no matter how desperate you are no matter how you know how much you really want to look for a job don't lose sight of being vigilant like you know doing your thorough research like ayana said you know look them up on linkedin because they will call you nonstop they will send these emails back to back to back even when you, as you delete them they will send them to you nonstop so you know you feel like oh are they real you, you just don't know and also be aware of like um there's romance scams too there's people on dating apps getting you know scams like catfish and you're sending money to people that you you know if you're like they 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 know how to 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 look for people how to, to look for the ones who are more vulnerable. So if like, if you're single or if you're a certain age, you know, do you, you know, they'll promise you they, they're, they're going to be with you. I've seen this on TV. And then you're sending money to people you've never even met before, physically. You know, even if you did a video call with them, you're still sending money to someone you don't know where in the world they are located. Right? So I don't know if anyone's ever watched 90 Day Fiance. It's fair. Okay, people are getting scammed and catfished. Those are romance um, um, scams. Then there's the WhatsApp or the sugar daddies and the sugar baby scams too that you'll see the bots, right? <laughs> Those ones, you know, they'll ask your cash app account. And then there's the WhatsApp. Even WhatsApp is getting uh, hacked now. And when WhatsApp gets hacked, It'll send, they'll send messages about like some kind of account number or money that you can make and they'll send it to like everybody in that group um and they'll send it on behalf of your account if they if they hack into your whatsapp so it would be like you are the one sending it to people and asking for their account number or you know an opportunity to win you know to make millions of millions of money or thousands of dollars and your family members are going to be like, a lot of your family members probably know it's not you, you know, because they, they know that you're not, they just know. Like some people might be like, this doesn't look right, right? It's fish. Um, let's see. And of course, you, we all know about the email ones as well. Um, it's I've, I've had emails from like, I've had emails ask, saying something about my PayPal account. Um, and I'm like, there's nothing wrong with my PayPal account, you know? So I'll go directly into my PayPal account and I'm like, there's no message from PayPal direct, but they are sent, someone is sent an email on behalf of PayPal with the same logo and everything. So what I do is I delete that and I report it. And then I go back into my delete box and delete it again. Right? So you report it, you flag it, uh, report it spam and delete it, you know, whatever you want to do. But there's so many ways that they're they can get you uh, or try to get you. Um, I gotta speak it. Thank you. One of the things that I this is I mean one of the things that I usually do if I get a phishing email that's what they call a lot of those emails is I actually look at the actual email that it came from, and a lot of times you'll see right away that it's not all of those companies like I got one from PayPal quote unquote the other day and it said that it said that my PayPal account is going to be suspended because of whatever it is so I went to the email and it said PayPal at some XYZ 123 website so I already knew right away that that was fake so it's very important not to click on anything sometimes they can clone your 
computer system just by you clicking on something, even without you entering a password and username. They do it a lot on Instagram as well. And the way they get people is a lot of users want to be verified on Instagram. So they'll say, um, this is Instagram's verification department. There's no, Instagram will never email you or, or they wouldn't even, they would not send you a DM telling you that they're trying to verify you. That's not what verification is meant for. So somebody I know fell victim to that because she's been wanting her business page to be verified. The mistake she made was she clicked on the link. They asked for her username and password. That's a dead giveaway. Why would Instagram need your username and password to verify you? So she put it in within 10 minutes. They already cloned her email. They changed her email password because the email was listed in her privacy in on her Instagram account. They changed her Instagram account and then they sent her, they also got access to her WhatsApp number. They sent her a WhatsApp saying, look, we don't have time for games. It was literally like a hostage situation. We don't have time for games pay us 500 euros and you'll get your account back. And uh, I told her to ignore them. She eventually got her account back, but it, it required us contacting friends at Facebook. It took like three weeks, but please, please be careful. Anything that asks you for your username and password, dead giveaway. If your bank contacts you, your actual bank and says, put in your username and password and it's unsolicited, they are the ones reaching out to you, it's likely not your bank. And the quickest way, like I said, to check is, I know it might say Citibank as the text, the same way we use hyperlinks and we'll say LinkedIn instead of our full LinkedIn. But when you click on it, it brings you to our LinkedIn page. That's what they do. So they mask the email by putting the name of the organization. But if you actually click on where it's from the email, you'll see right away that it's a fake email. And that's the way I protect myself. But it's, it's scary because sometimes we're busy and we might just click on it like, what's going on? And uh, it's, it's really crazy. The other day, a friend of mine got an email that had her password in the subject header. And when she opened the email, it said, um, we know that you've been visiting porn sites, right? <laughs> and um, we're going to expose it to your coworkers and everybody on LinkedIn, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's crazy. And when she really looked at it, right, she called me and she's like, oh, my God, what do I do? So I said, are you going to porn sites? I'm not judging you, but are you? She said, no. I said, so what are you panicking about? She's like, I don't know, because they had my password. And I said, look at the password very well on the subject. And it actually wasn't her password, but it was close. So what happened is a lot of us use the same password everywhere. And so I think they hacked one of her old email accounts that she no longer used. So they, so they used that password. And so she remembered that that was her password at one point, but it was actually the wrong password. And so she started really panicking because she, but then I had to have her reason, like, do you actually go on these sites? And she's like, no. I said, so let's put that aside. Number two is that your actual password. She's like, when I look closer, it wasn't. But that's how somebody can quickly panic and think like, oh my God, they must have everything. And I told her, go right now. The reason why I like using Max is because there's this managed password thing where it tells you when some of your passwords are compromised meaning this password is being used too much. You need to change it up. So I always change my passwords every three months. A lot of us don't. We're using the same password we've been using for 10 years. And after a while, you're leaving that digital footprint and somebody is going to figure out that it's your birthday or your first child's birthday or somebody's nickname. So you got to be careful with that. So, um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. Make sure you check those emails, like act the actual emails and click on nothing. I just wanted to make a comment if um, anyone can PTR. This is a scam I just got, and this is something hot for those on Clubhouse or on Instagram looking That's to get That's literally a, the DM I'm talking yeah, about, the yep, same thing. Yep, yep. so I PTR'd it. And the thing is, is that it'll say that, you know, you can verify to get the blue tick. So what, what Amin was just speaking of, this is it. I've received it. And the ironic thing is I've reported this to Instagram multiple times and the account still exists. So please, you know, I'll pass the mic in a moment, but if you can PTR, look at this, look for this. If you get it, do nothing. Don't respond when you click on it to Amin's point. It asks for your account. So <laughs> please don't get trapped because everybody wants verified right now. So just want everybody to see that. I'll keep that up for a bit so you can PTR and see it. Um, but I'm Amanda and I'll go ahead and pass the mic. 
Thanks so much for putting that up there, Amanda. Um, I think that'll be really helpful. Um, and if there's anybody that's new to Clubhouse, because this was something I stumbled with, PTR pulled to refresh. So if you just pull the screen down, it'll refresh. And then you'll see Amanda's profile picture will change to the Instagram fish that she was talking about. Um, I think we have a couple of people that had some comments. And if I pronounce your name, I will apologize in advance. Um, to Joswe, did you have some comments you wanted to add? Yes, actually, um, yes, you said my name right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, happy Father's Day to all, and then thank you for creating this platform. And um, like Tommy, Professor Tommy mentioned a lot about social engineering, like, um, and then Amanda was talking about like a hashing, having a common passport, passport, and then as well as like Amina was talking about phishing. I would suggest um, this is something that I recently came across. I would suggest to read the H.B. Gary case because this, uh, all the things that we just talked about, it's just explained so nicely, one by one. So it's a case, uh, so H.B. Gary is the CEO of this uh, government security company. And then at that time, like, you know, there was this um, enormous hacker and then H.B. Gary actually claimed that he'll be able to expose that um, enormous and then, you know, anonymous, the hackers, they didn't like it. Um, so what they actually do is they did the opposite. So they were actually able to hack down the HB Gary website and delete the um, company's uh, backup data. And then, you know, he trashed all of his Twitter account to remotely wipe his um, iPad and then stole, like, you know, expose all the emails and transactions. So it's, it's a really interesting case because how they were actually able to do is... Um, so it, it will make sense, like how they were able to, um, you know, use one piece of information they first got to get another piece of information, and that and that's how it all adds up. So they first use like a, a SQL injections to get the uh, the password database, like, um, and then you know the HP Gary, of course, it was the the website was not well written, and then they were actually able to gen generate an SQL query, and then after that they used like a common password, like. Um, was the thing they used like a, a rainbow table yes to get like a clear text password because of course they didn't use salting um so that's another uh, way they, they actually got through um the passwords you know like a, through using like a, a rainbow table like a pre-computed one and then there is like you know after that they were actually able to like find a vulnerability within that software of course um, like you mentioned, like the importance of actually updating these bugs, like software update, updates, just so they could remove these bugs. So they were actually able to find that vulnerability and, and exploit it. And what after they did that is so amazing. They actually used social engineering to gain the access to web server. So he was actually on a vacation trip, and then the hacker was acting like him, the HB Gary, the CEO, and then telling his employers to you know get get him the information because like he can't do it because since he's on a vacation. So it's it's really like I was truly fascinated about it, and then it just accumulates all of this information that we have talked here. And then it helps us to understand, like, you know, in a step-by-step -step process. So um, my name is Tejaswi, and I'm done speaking. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, is it Tashwi? Tashwi, thank you. We really appreciate that input. Yeah. So they can use different types of, the um, you know, mechanism to get in. So they have so many ways because you know some people, all they do professionally is to hack. So we have different types. We have the white hackers, we have the gray hats, we have the, the blue hat, we have the white hats. So some people do it for many reasons. So that's another conversation for another day. Why they hack and who are they? And you know, and all of those things. We're gonna be discussing those things more in a break into tech hour, which is one hour every day. 12 p.m. Eastern time. If you can come into those rooms, we go over a lot of stuff. So thank you so much for that. Jude, I see you joining us. Thank you for coming. Do you have any question or you want to um, add on? All right. Um, I mean, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. Um, first and foremost, I would even like to say that, you know, having this kind of platform is quite important because I've come to realize that, you know, um, in organizations, 
hackers breaking into organization is not just about your competency in how to you know get your way around the security tools i think it boils down to education you know um one, once people in the organization are well informed you know on how to be very very security conscious just like in a good number of us have mentioned here it would keep everyone on their toes you know regarding trying to safeguard uh, themselves from attacks and from experience, I realized that 70 or 80 percent of the time, most attacks are around phishing, you know, like we mentioned there. But then the reality boils down to the fact that um, when attack an attack really comes, you know, your ability to handle the attack becomes a major concern in an organization. And I'd like to actually see how I can, you know, chip in a few things here so that people can know what to really do. Now, regarding phishing, you know, phishing is like a normal thing. Now everyone is beginning to get informed about it. Um, you know, you see on, you know, some emails that are not, you know, the truth is the, the, the hackers are becoming more advanced right now. They know people are getting to know about phishing. So they are devising new ways. Before, it used to be around cryptography-related attacks. So now, most times, they use text messages now. And once you click on the link on the text, you get to compromise, you know, some very, very valuable information, even on your mobile phone and that. So it's just important that we, you know, keep, keep ourselves informed with the latest in the industry. Now, one of the things I can actually use to educate people regarding, maybe if you see a link that you know or you suspect to be phishing, you can always, first thing you do is try and, you know, notify the security team. Don't be too quick to click a link you're not sure of. Like, place a call through if you don't have a security team. Um... There's, a, there's an open source tool you can use, like URL Scandal, IO, or uh, Virus Total. All these open source tools are what security engineers or security SOC analysts actually use to be able to carry out reconnaissance, where they search and find out about if a link is malicious or not. Um, most times, when you do those search, you realize that um, the if you realize, it will give you information about the link. You know, most times, if the link is newly created, if the link as we newly created, you will, you will give you the information on the, on, the, on the website there. And you would know if, I mean, for someone to launch an attack just now, it shows that you just created the link. You know, all of all that will give you that information. And all of all that, you will, it will help you also know if it has been reported long before now. And all of all that. So, you know, and now the organizations are using the security orchestration automation and response right now. Um, the reason why this is new is because you're actually trying to incorporate threat and vulnerability management. You're incorporating security incidents response and security automation, you know, all in one process so that you don't, so that the security team don't always have to go about, you know, running after everyone in the organization and trying to look at maybe if they have phishing. The other things to security as well. So that's why most organizations are moving towards uh, the SOAR technology because, um, the, the reason to automate is because uh, it's the regular process that security operation, uh, security uh, analysts do is usually more routine based and it can be very tedious and most times it can be very time consuming. So the reason why they actually orchestrate that method is to save time, to give the security operation, uh, analysts more time to be able to concentrate on other related areas of the job. Because right now, the, the bad guys are going, they are up in their game, they are going beyond fishing, like I mentioned, and all of that. So, like I said, make sure you notify the security team. You could also use, like I said, virus total or URL scan the IO to be able to, you know, investigate certain links to be sure if they are malicious or not. I know a lot of us might be scared to do that, but these are some of the things the security guys will do. And they try to inculcate it in the SOAR technology. And one thing I also need to mention is that most of the time, when you click a phishing email, um, what happens is that a ransomware is usually downloaded. So the, your ability to click gives the bad guys more like um, uh, command and control enablement for them to see what's going on within your device. Now, if you, if eventually you've clicked on it and you realize that you have compromised your information, there's other things you can do, you know, in the security team. Um, first thing, you can just lock down your computer. Like, do that as fast as possible. You could isolate your device. Uh, maybe the security team can help you block like, the network traffic using their firewalls. They could also disconnect the device from the network or pull out the plug when necessary. This is usually like an old-fashioned way of doing things. And another thing you could do is to actually disable ransomware uh, process. There are certain anti-ransomware anti um, software tools you could use, like Hitman Pro or MC Soft Emergency Kit. These are two 
tools that can come in handy when you're trying to uh, disable a, a, a ransomware process. And number three thing you can do is you could decrypt the files. Because most times when you click on link, what it does is to encrypt some of the files you have in your devices. I don't know, not everyone would have experienced it, but the truth is most of the time, most of the guys that want to ask for ransom your, through, their, through their attack is that they want to encrypt your files. When they encrypt your file, your files become difficult to open. When you open your files in your device, you start giving you code, you know? It looks like it's corrupted already, but what has happened at that point in time is that it has been encrypted, so you need to decrypt it. You could use malwarehunterteam.com to do that, but then there are some ransomware that, have, that are very difficult to encrypt, decrypt, like Spora. Spora is quite difficult to decrypt, but the likes of Jigsaw are actually very easy to decrypt through uh, the malwarehunterteam.com. And if you realize that most of the time, if you realize that it's difficult to encrypt, maybe if your device has been infected, you could just do like an auto manual backup or restore, you know, the system to the building machine. That's thank thank you like so much, Jude. Thank you, Jude. Thank you for I'm those sorry. gems that you are Jude, dropping. I was, I was going to take an apology. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to. Thank you. I'm done speaking. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Jude. We really appreciate all the gems you dropped. And uh, those are very valuable uh, points and uh, those are valuable topics. So thank you. You actually give us a lecture there. And I can see that you are passionate about that. So please feel free to come to our rooms um, on during the weekdays at 12 p.m. I mean, Eastern time. We're always there every day. And during the daytime, just for one hour, we discuss many, many topics and we go deep like you are doing now. We go deep into like discussing some days Chrome Master, some days um, System Development Life Cycle, some days, we're gonna be doing a lot of cybersecurity this week. So please feel free to come into our rooms and help us out also with those um, gems. We really do appreciate you so much. And we're always here also on uh, Sundays at 6 p.m. On actually it's 6 p.m., but today we are doing 4 p.m. because we are going to another room for another program. So thank you so much. You are truly, truly appreciated. I just want to have other people to be able to chime in and add more to it. Uh, I'm also looking at two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is another one. Uh, you know, sometimes when you log in, you, some of us use password, and we already mentioned some of us don't even know how to use strong password. Our passwords are very weak. They are dog and cat names, and they are names that you can find in the dictionary and things like that. So you don't want to um, <laughs> you don't want to, to 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 be in that kind of situations. And some of us don't even change your password. Normally, you should change your password like every some or some controls say every three months or every 90 days or 60 days. Some of us have password, like Amin said, for a year, for 10 years, same password, which is your spouse name or your dog's name. So make sure that you use strong password and also use two-factor authentication, like I mentioned. Two-factor authentication means most of us have that. I mean, now, when you use your password, a strong password, you can use another factor. Like maybe you can use, um, a, you know, you know how you set up, um, like um, they, they actually gonna send it to you. Do you want to, to, to when, as soon as you log in, when you set up a multi-factor authentication, it can send you a, a, a code. It will send you a code, you verify. I'm sure most of you have seen that, right? Maybe by text, by email, that's another factor that you can put a pin in or a code in. Some of us is my biometrics. It might be your thumbnail or your voice or iris or face, right? So all of those things are ways in which we can um, have depth of security on our systems. So we are not just using only one, we can have that in defense in depth, uh, you know, layers of security to protect our infrastructure and to protect our systems. So think about that, always enable that. Another one, we're gonna, you know, popcorn side discuss this as we go, it's, it's going to a website that's not secured. So you want to double check to make sure you, before you can put personal information on any website, make sure it's using the HTTPS. So for example, if you log on, trying to log on your, your web browser, maybe Firefox or Google or whatever, make sure it's saying HTTPS column slash slash www. Don't put anything on something that says HTTP. Don't put any, actually good these days, it, say, it will say unsecured. 
it will now say unsecured before it doesn't say that. So don't make sure you don't put personal information on there because if you do, it's gonna to come to them in the clear. They can actually get use those information against you. They can get those information. Personal information is gonna to appear to them. Whatever you wanna hack in as clearly, they can see all those password and they can use all those information against you. Anybody have ever had that uh, experience that before? Wanna chime in? Anybody want to chime in? Oh, no, my cyber students are just sitting here. Come on, guys. Yes, I've seen it. Um, it will say not secure at the very top left of the of the browser. A lot of the websites that, that are just HTTP um, are not secure. HTTPS or 203 r and then you'll see the lock. It's like a padlock. You'll see that as well in the browser, so that will let you know that the website is you know, safe, um, HTTPS, um, and then you'll see the colon and, uh, yeah, it, it will, you, you know, it will tell you literally in red on the very top at the left, um, that it's not secure. And then sometimes depending on how good your firewall is and like, if you're, well, maybe if you're using a company laptop, well, you'll see like it just wouldn't go. It would it would say page not found or something. Like it would be like an error page almost. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um I don't know if you were hearing me, but I think I was muted. Um Teresa Carlton, Telma, Richard, Tosin, you all need to come up and talk about this. <laughs> this is your area. Um, yes, yeah, so that's very important that you make sure that you don't, um, you know, go to websites and start, you know, putting on stuff that are not, um, you know, relevant. And also make sure you back up your important data. If you have data that are very important to you, back them up. Um, there's so many opportunities and avenues to back up your data. Sometimes you can put your data on uh, maybe Google Cloud or even, you know, Google Drive or iCloud and all of that. Uh, Dropbox, back them up because if anything happens to you and you lost your data through data um, security breach, you can't get those things back. But once you have a backup, you can easily get that back when you get a new system and all that. So make sure you have a backup. And also, if you are an organization or even in your homes, train people that are around you, cybersecurity awareness, make sure you train them, train your employees, train your you know, your families, members, you know, train them. Because if you are trying to protect infrastructure, try to protect, and they are not trained, they might be the one that will fall victim. And then same, then, then there's no, you know, everything's gonna, <laughs> same mistake, same mistake. So best practice is being trained to consistently know the right thing to do. And that's why you see in most organizations, they train you every six months. Some people train you every three months. You might be thinking, why are they training us? We did this thing before we are doing it again because they need to train you and retrain you. you you get you tend to forget things especially if it's not your area you are just being trained for it so make sure you are trained and continue to train them to make sure that they avoid all these mistakes it's very important and um, as well as make sure that you um you um disable any services or devices that you are not using if you have any like for example if you have bluetooth and now you're using your Bluetooth device and it's just enabled. If you are not using it, just disable it. So there's so many other services you can have on your systems that are there, they are open. They can use that to get in, you understand? So when you disable them, you are blocking that access for hackers to be able to hack your system through getting into those devices. Turn, the, turn off devices that you are not using and they, they link to them that you are not using. Make sure you turn them up. And also, um, make sure you don't go to a site that are asking you to uh, maybe looking for free coupons. Some of us want freebies. Always want, oh, give me your information. I'll give you something free. Or, or you know, you are going for freebies. You are clicking on freebies, looking for free stuff. Downloading free software online. <laughs> You're going online to download free software. You're looking for free, you want to hack the software. You have Microsoft, or, yeah, 
Microsoft Office, and then you want to buy it because you don't want to pay um, $100 for the license for a lifetime, you're not looking for a free one online, or you're going online to download free PDF of all different books. Uh -huh. It's free, but it's already embedded with malware. It's free, but it's already be, uh, embedded with porn. So when you get in, you just see porn popping up everywhere on your on your computer or things happening, but like it's embarrassing, but you didn't do it, but who's going to believe you? I saw a teacher being fired. I mean, we, we remember, at least if we're in the Maryland area, I remember that incident when a teacher was fired because she, they were in class, in the classroom, and she was sharing with the third grader, I think. And then porn, porn sites started popping up everyone on the computer. And he, the teacher swear that he never went to any porn site, but they fired him because they can't really prove it. He's probably going looking for freebies, <laughs> free stuff, you know. Yeah, Amanda, I want to say something. So we need to be careful with that. Yeah, just, just two random password things. One is the easy one that we hear constantly, but we need to be told constantly is the old have your password on a post-it note that so many people do in the office because they think, well, everybody works together. Nobody cares about my password, but we don't know who's coming in as a vendor that could take that. And it's the silliest thing because we all know this, but yet so many people do it. That, and let's say there's a certain uh, software or tool with the office, like a reporting tool that everybody is using the same password for their group. That's not exactly great either for security. And a lot of companies do that. I mean, there may be a specific reporting software that you only use once in a blue moon. So they just send out the same password to everybody within that group. So something, if we can try to avoid that, that's probably a best practice as well. Avoid doing that if you can, giving everyone that same password. Yeah, and then another way, I, I see like mostly teenagers like who um, like are actively in the, involved in um, Instagram or Twitter, they would do like uh, one of the posts would require like, you know, oh, um, what's your favorite number? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite um, location? So, and then, you know, you would see like somebody would actually um, type in the answer and then tag to somebody and it's, it's a thread. But it's also another way of you giving your personal information just so the hackers could actually guess your password because you're you're giving out your you know your lucky numbers or uh, your pet name so it's also one of the things that one must watch out yeah and and one thing also i always because i always have same cloth for the kids during the summertime and actually luckily we're having another one this year in july with microsoft um, partnership with microsoft so i always tell the kids that um okay tell me i'm bringing you up you want to Speak about something. So I always, I always say to the children, don't talk to a stranger. It's applicable online. Because you see these kids, they will be online on Discord. They don't have no business be there, especially if they're less than 12 years old. But they are there anyways. They are there playing game, talking to strangers, and giving all the information of the homes. You know, so most of the time, the kids know they have the password to, the, to, to everything. They know the password to their moms, everything. You never know what the strangers are talking, asking them online. And they are sharing them because they made them online. And they just think they are kids like them. They are just playing around, not knowing these people are actually criminals. So being careful, I always tell them, not talking to strangers is applicable online. Don't think you don't you, you already know them because you made them on Discord or on, on Roblox. And then you are chatting with them and asking you everything about your family, your parents, and you are giving them everything. So I always tell them, don't talk to strangers, it's applicable online. Yeah, I see two new people came. Uh, Azita, Azita, thanks for joining us. Do you have any question for us, or want to chime in? No, I just came in, and I love listening all the all the uh, treasures you're you're putting into the room, and for everyone. And, and so, for at this point, yeah, I'd love to listen in, and then if I have something that that would be valuable, I will definitely chime in. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Azita. Miksha, is it Miksha? Miksha, welcome. Yep, it's Misha. Thank you, Tammy. Yes, please go ahead. You don't want to chime in or you have a question. I would like to chime in. I'd like to dovetail on something that you said about two-factor authentication. Um, this happened to me recently. I had an issue with my original two-factor device, and I was unable to get into all of my codes. I was able to fix the device and get my codes, but it is incredibly important to back up your two-factor stuff, so that way if you lose your device or you drop in a puddle, 
or the kid eats it, speaking of which, happy Father's Day, then you have some way to get back to your two-factor stuff. I know that Authy is one two-factor authenticator that will do backups for you. I know that 1Password will do it. Well, now let you export your two-factor secrets. So if you're not using two-factor, and you should, just make sure that you've got a way to back up your two-factors so that way, if you have a physical problem with your device, you're not. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Yeah, that's very true. And uh, because some company, they give you a dongle that you have to uh, take with you. So every time you log in, um, you, you have to use the dongle. But what if the dongle get lost? Some banks use it. I use it a lot at, at, at the job. Um, but there's something called Authenticator that is, you can download on Google. That can be set up. That, like for that, we use that for our cloud environment. So you just use that. When trying to log in, you just put your password, then you use a key, and then you use it. Um, and then you use the um, the authenticator. Just send it, send it to you. Just that makes it easier. But some companies are still using the RCA and all of those other uh, older version dongles. So thank you for that, Miss Toots. You want to say chime in? Yeah, I don't know if ever, anyone's ever heard of Okta Verify, so that's new also. Um, they're using it as a two-factor authentication. So, like, I use, like, um, so I have many devices, and so we get the app. You can download Okta Verify app on your phone, um, um, the mobile app. So if you're, you, if you're trying to get on one of the internal uh, sites, like a SharePoint, and on another device, right? So you need to verify and sign in, and then set, it'll send you a code. You have to open up the app, and the app will generate a new token each time you sign on, and then you verify through your phone that you were trying to sign on on another device. You verify it's you. So Opti Verify also has a great app. It's a great system for the multi factor application. I have a question. Would love to know what are people's thoughts on um, suggested passwords? So passwords that are automated, like created for you and suggested. Um, are they good? Are they bad? Is it recommended or not really? I don't. <laughs> I, I use haven't. it, but you know they're long. Um, I use a suggested, and then you can go on. You can actually type in suggested password and give you like a long sentence. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if those ones are, I really don't know. Um, I don't, but if it has like symbols and stuff like that, but then it makes you wonder what if someone is hacking into like Google? Because Google does generate, can suggest these, right? Um, but it does manage your, also manage your passwords and let you know if you recycled your password. So, I've used it. Because I, I, I'm password out now. I can't even think sometimes. Like I get, it's like a writer's block. I don't know if that happens to anyone where you just can't think of a good password. It sure does. And, and that's why I'm like, um, I know that the, the statistics show that obviously the more characters you have, I think 18 or 20 characters is ideal. It would take someone like 70 years to break that uh, passcode. Uh, but we'd love to hear, you know, kind of if this uh, suggested password actually does work, if it's good or, or not. I know Misha, you wanted to jump in. Yeah, I would love to jump in, thank you. Um, the right thing to do is to use the password manager and to use multiple different passwords Ideally, you want to have one different password for every single site you go to. I use one password right now, and I love it because it works on phone, on browser, on web, on Linux, command line, you name it. And that lets me keep all literally 700 plus different passwords I have secure and safe where I can get to it from any device. As long as you're using multiple passwords for multiple different sites, I think you're in a good place. I know that when Chrome suggests you a password, that code is actually run in the browser and not run on Google, so it doesn't leave your machine. I know that a lot of other password managers like that intentionally run that password generation locally on your computer and not like pulling a password out of a deck of cards up from Google. So by that means, that is not an angle of attack that I think you need to worry about. 
Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I use that. <laughs> I do the same technique, and it tells you to change it, um, pay attention to it, and you, you know, make those two things done. So, yeah, you definitely want to, you know, don't recycle and go back to all the ones you reused and change it to a different one, a long one each time. This character. Yes. I, um, I'd also like to mention another resource. I've only been listening for about half an hour, so I don't know if anybody has mentioned this yet. There's a fantastic website called Have I Been Pwned, P-W-N-E-D, that you can basically sign up for your own personal email accounts, or if you run a domain, you can set up your whole domain. And the guy who runs it basically has all of these password breaches in the database and can notify you for when there is a breach for your email address or for anybody on your domain. I use it at my school and for my students, and it has been very, very useful to know when there is a breach and how to react to it. You can set it up. It's free. It will take you 30 seconds. If you do one thing today, it is something to do. Thank you so much, Mitcha. We really appreciate you. Hope to see you more. We're always there every Sunday at 6 p.m., but today we are here at 4 p.m. Um, and also during the day, we're always here at 12 p.m. Eastern time every day, except for Saturday. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. Telma, Telma is one of my students. Welcome. Do you want to chime in over your, or you have a question for us? Telma, are you here? I know you are new, so let me help you to unmute. Um, Well, if Talman does not have a question, I have a question. Um, this is the Jaspi. Since uh, I see in your profile like an IT trainer and they offer like you know courses, I um, so I was previously a pre nursing student, and then I switched it to IT, and then um, and now I currently am trying at Splunk as a one of the top uh, five hundred Fortune companies, and that's where I actually. I'm sorry, Salma. I, I I think you're uh, speaking right now, but I hear it very low. Salma, are you saying something? Can I speak now? Yes. Yeah, sure. I, yeah. I, okay. Okay. Say okay. Yes. Um, um. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Mr. Professor Temi, a student. So I'm chiming in about uh, my experience about um, job offers. So what I want to talk about about that is about being mindful of that and really make, uh, carefully to know if it's calm. I remember during the COVID because um, everybody was so um, desperate to get a job. So my family member sent me a an email, like someone is looking for like um, people to apply, apply to. Um, IRS, IRS is looking for 500 candidates to move in, um, move out the stimulus package. So I called her. I read the, I read the email. I was like, I asked her, who, who sent you this? Because with my knowledge in cybersecurity, I know when uh, there is a genuine um, offer and a, a scam. So she was like, no, apply, apply. Just send your information. Send your information. It's closing up uh, fast. So what I did, I went to IRS website to check if there is any offer, if there is anything like that, like they are looking for candidates to move in to move out the stimulus uh, money. And when I went there, I didn't see any anything like that. So, so what I'm saying is, being uh, like the, the, all these cameras that are desperate to get like uh, people that are so desperate to get a job, for you to send you your personal information. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Because I think Ms. Stutz also mentioned something like that. Yeah, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, who else has something to say? I think somebody was saying something before. The Jawasi was saying something. Oh, sorry about that. I think there was a mix up. Um, she was trying. Uh, yes, I was, uh, I was taking the Thomas time uh, since we we're waiting for a response. 
but I had a question. Um, because I had a shift in a career from a nursing to cyber and also at my current internship where I really learned a lot about cybersecurity and um, the industry and then, you know, just the basics like um, all that phishing, um, like Salma mentioned, like how it created this time bound and um, emotion and in actions. Um, so that's definitely one of the ways to spot phishing. And those are some of the things that I learned from my internship. Um, I intern at the incident response team and, you know, um, I'm currently looking for the fall opportunities, but also what I'm looking, um, I wanted to ask how I could like, what are the courses that could teach me like a hands on activities? Like, of course, I got the cyber, um, the security plus certificate and then um, the network uh, network plus as well. But, you know, a network would not teach a lot about, like, you know, uh, a network traffic, for example. It talked a little bit about Wireshark, but, I, of course, like, I, I'm looking for something that would actually give me, like, a hands-on training um, about Wireshark, like, how to, like, a, you know, um, a packets uh, a, a packet snap or uh, stuff like that. Okay. So, so, yeah. You need to take, um, so you might want to consult with the person who teaches um, the C. Y S A plus. Um, that's the cybersecurity vulnerability assessment management course, and it is hands on. You will learn about packet sniffing and Wireshark. Um, you will learn the back end of the Linux and how to like to sniff, you know, you know those different packets and sniff any like. Um, you'll learn about the OS ten the security uh, breaches. So you'll learn about all those different things. Um, and Burp Speaks also. Uh, I would suggest just to uh, consult with Professor Tini. She offers that uh, CYS paper. It's actually a cybersecurity, but it's like a lab simulation. Yeah, Ms. Suzy, we're going in and out. So, um, yeah, what she was saying is that there's a program called CYSA Plus. It's more of vulnerability management labs. It's like um, everything you learn in Security Plus, you're hands on on them, like setting up firewall, setting up um, intrusion detection systems, they are um, setting up the SIM, um, doing vulnerability management scans with Nessus, with Wireshark, with um, um, you know, all those tools, tools for virus, tools, tools, nodes, and so many other things you're going to learn, both on Windows and also on the um, Linux environment. And you should do forensic investigation, so many things in those labs. So that's one of the labs you can really do and it's on. And it's going to, you know, it's a, there's a lot. It's like 30 labs, 30 different labs and tools that you can learn about if you want to be hands on. And you can set off working as a cybersecurity engineer, uh, working on the, in the command center, like SOC analysts and stuff like that. But if you're interested in being more hands on on paperwork or getting their ATO package together, getting the approval for the system, then you want to look at the risk management side, which is more like a RMF uh, CAP class. We have those as well. If you're interested, just let me know, I can guide you the, the right direction. Thank you so much. I'll definitely reach out. Uh, you hit right on the point uh, what I was looking for. So it sounds good to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, any other input? Uh, I just wanted to add, make sure you reach out to her for that course. It, I loved it. Um, it's very new. A lot of people are even like really offering that. So she's offering that. And you can learn a lot more than just that. And it's very hands on to lab. Yeah, and you can also look on my website. My website is uh, myituniversity.com. If you go on myituniversity.com, is a website where you can see different um, IT online training courses that you can even look into. And they are all available from, um, from cybersecurity to AWS Cloud, Azure Cloud, to um, to Scrum Master Business Analysis. Um, cyber, we have three three stack of cyber securities on there as well. Just go on there and look around and see what is there. And uh, my cyber security classes are coming up on July 3rd, which is um, in two weeks. So if you're interested in any of those ones, you can just DM me on Instagram or on LinkedIn. 
I can give you guidance what to do. Yeah. So I see JJ just joined us. JJ, thank you for joining. Do you have any question for us or you want to chime in? Good morning, everyone. JJ here. It's very early. I've just woken up. It's nearly 7 a.m. So that's why I haven't been up on the stage yet because I'm not awake, even though I might sound it. I'm still tired. I'm loving hearing what you guys have to say. Um, and it's a pleasure being here. Hopefully I can be in the beginning of this room next time you do have it. So um, I've already following the club and, and look forward to being a part of what you guys do talk about from a cyber point of view for hints and tips to avoid scams um i've missed a lot of what you guys have said but i will say uh, one little bit of advice i give to everybody is if something's incoming which means if you're if you receive a phone call if you receive a text or an sms if you receive an email or get a knock on the door that's where you need to really stop and think use your critical thinking and stop because that's the time where the scammers are doing their very best and it's no different here in australia than it is everywhere else in the world so if anything is incoming and makes you think uh oh or um prompts an emotional response from you whatever that might be whether it be happiness or wanting to help or fear or greed or yes i can get something whatever it is stop and think because it's probably a scam but that's all from me. JJ, thanks, guys. Thank you, JJ. We really appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, um, and good morning to you. I, know, I noticed that you're from in, in Australia. So please join us um, every day. We always say every day, 12 p.m. Eastern time. I know that will be late for you over there. And But it, on Sundays, you can always meet us here. We're always here at 6 p.m. But today we're here at 4 p.m. So we go between 4 and 6 p.m. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. So another thing we can also think about is uh, when you share your information, sharing data, file sharing, right? With file sharing, you want to make sure that you use secure tools to share your files. Because you, if you're sharing your files and you are using tools that are not, and not gonna encrypt your sharing, um, what you are sharing, then you're sharing everything that can be hacked. They can hack into it. And also, um, using VPN can help with that, making sure you can privatize your connection. V VPN stands for um, virtual private network. So most of the time when you um, work from home and you're using your office laptop, the office laptop has created, has installed a VPN client on your system, which is connected to, to their VPN on their network. So when you are connected from home, you are connected through a tunnel that is encrypted. So everything you're passing through that tunnel is encrypted. So it's, it's, encryption means it is uh, it's this locked up with a key. And only people on the other side that has the key can actually read it. So if anybody tries to break in and read what you are sending through the tunnel, they just see a bunch of gibberish. They can't read it because they don't have the key, right? It's encrypted. So it's only until you get to the other side, it's now decrypted, they can read it. So you can have your own setup as well. So that everything you're sending back and forth is encrypted and you're protected. It's like using some, passing through something. Um, it's like um, using something that you secured and lock it up. And then anybody that wants to get in have to use a key, okay? And there'll be a day that will go into different areas of what is encryption? What does it stand for? What are the different types of encryption? I'll be dropping those gems in our one hour rooms, you know, these two weeks. So make sure you come to them. You'll hear a lot of free classes. We do a lot of that. So thank you all for, for that. So we already mentioned, don't be lazy with your password, okay? Make sure you change them often, change your password often. And also make sure that you, um, you upgrade your, your hardware with current hardware. So if, for example, if something broke on your system and they said, oh, you have to replace with this version or the other version, and you think, oh, I want the cheaper one, I don't have much money, but the, the cheaper one is not supported. So it's, it's not supported, it's old. So it might let you get the tag because of the older version of hardware that you're using. So make sure you do your research to use the most current hardware, especially when they try to refurbish or help you to install a new hardware on your system. Make sure you are not using the older version of hardware. 
It's very important. Yeah, so that's important. And if you notice that you have any hardware, um, spam wear on your system, make sure you clean them up immediately. It's like, it's like somebody that is infected with coronavirus, you know, they have to quarantine them. So the same thing is, is these are viruses and stuff as well. That's why I always use that to let my student know that's how dangerous it can be when you are infected with with uh, with with a um, pandemic or with uh, with a particular kind of contagious situation. So the same thing when you have all these um, malware can infect everything on the network. So that's why they have to quarantine that particular system and clean it off before they can put them back. So when you notice that, make sure immediately like. Uh, Jude was saying, shut the system down and let it be taken out of the network and clean up before they can bring it back. Don't just say, oh, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. And if you get hacked and uh, maybe there was a, a, an attack, a, a attack on your system and they are as, asking for ransom, that's what we call ransomware. Don't send any money to anybody, don't. Because if you send money to anybody, you can't track that and they're not gonna even give you a, your accounts back. So don't ever try to fall victim. Don't send them anything, don't. So once you have your backup, you can just go back to your backup and upload your files and, and that's it. So you don't have to pay them. So be careful with that. Um, also avoid public networks. If you go on Starbucks and you click on, go on Starbucks and then you just use their hotspots or the, to the hotel or to any public area, libraries, be careful. You might think, oh, it's secure, that's okay. But if there's a situation whereby you might have an evil toy, there might be somebody also there that popping up their network and they call themselves, maybe you're in Starbucks, they call themselves Starbucks and they, 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 they are, they were Wi-Fi is actually has a higher level of this thing than the other one, right? It's broadcasting higher than the other one. Then you think, oh, this must be the best one. You connect to it, you're just using it. You don't know that it's connected to the evil twin. They look like Starbucks, but it's actually the, 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 the criminal that's sitting in the corner, you know, you know, trying to be, trying to get people's information. So be careful with that. Really, really need to be careful with that. Okay. So that, yeah. Azita, you have a, you want to chime in? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't mind, I, I actually wanted to piggyback on what you said and what JJ said um, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of uh, being aware of all of these things. I think the key thing for me has always been, and I, and I say this not just in terms of sort of cybersecurity, but any kind of scam, is to slow down. Um, and, and I often do this when I get phone calls where people are trying to, or scammers are trying to create an urgency whether it's through email or a phone call and they, you know, they, especially when they uh, pretend to be an official, um, you know, this is the police department and your money is going to go to X, Y, and Z, or it's the fire department and you need to write a check or you need to give us your credit card number. Times like that, I think my own personal experience is I slow down and like JJ said, do the critical thinking, I start asking asking questions. And I often then try to slow them down by saying, you know, give me your phone number and I will call you back. Um, and that, you know, kind of stops them. And if they are scammers, they are not going to do that. And once, you know, I do hang up, I actually call up if it, if it becomes one of those things where I, you know, sort of listen to my gut instinct and I'm, um, you know, I kind of think there's something wrong. I actually try to call the agency and find out whether, um, you know, whether they had actually called or whether it was a scam. So I just wanted to kind of share that along um, with all the, the wonderful things that you're all sharing. Um, for me, the key is slow down. Don't let anybody push you into doing it. Thank you, Azita. And that's actually called social engineering. They are forcing you. They are they are like trying to be who they are not. They are trying to, to pressure you to give those information. Some people, they are just trained to do that. They are just, just experts in being such a criminal. Uh, <laughs> and they will just tell you they are this person, they are that person. If you don't give them what they, they needed, they're gonna, you're gonna go to jail. The IRS is asking you to pay. IRS doesn't call, they don't call you to pay and you take you to jail. You know, and they, they, they try to be people of author, in authority. They try to to be fam familiarize themselves with you, that they know you, that all those sort of things like that. 
So, so yeah, slow down, take a deep breath and tell them I'm going to call you back. Don't give them anything. You know, yeah. JJ, you want to say something? Azita. Yes, thank you so much, Tammy. I just wanted to reach out and let you guys know, you can probably see in my profile picture, the World Cybersecurity Forum is coming up at the end of July. Um, a brainchild I decided we needed here to talk to people outside of cyber um, to really bring them on board with what is going on in the world. So this is designed to be a 24-hour event um, starting in uh, following the sun, as they say. So... I'll be kicking it off at some stupid o'clock, as my friends would say, 5.30 a.m. Australian time, um, and uh, taking it around the world. If anyone would like to either participate, let me know, because I'm looking for those 24 hours to, as we follow around to make sure every continent um, is covered and topics are covered. So I'm curating a ridiculous agenda when I'm in ridiculous covering everything so people know what's coming up. So if you're interested, you just want to know more about it, please feel free to either follow myself um, or ideally follow the club. Um, so if you click on my face, scroll all the way down, I think it's around 10 clubs across the, the World Cybersecurity Forum. There's going to be some incredible people involved <clears throat> and it's not just designed for technical people. Um, and I said it because, Temi, I could hear your words and I'm hearing other people. This is um, your educators. So, And that's what we're looking for, demystify cybersecurity, whether you're a parent, um, just an individual, whether you've got elderly folk in your world, uh, whether you are owning a business, you're an employee, doesn't matter. Everybody needs to know about cyber. So um, I welcome you all. It's not, not a paid event. Everyone does it for, for themselves. You're welcome to promote whatever you're doing. Um, absolutely. But if you'd like any more information, please reach out. Um, I would be honoured if you all would attend and bring some non-cyber people with you. That's the challenge. Our communication is brilliant within ourselves, our own group, um, but getting the people outside of cyber to listen to our message is key. It's what I do every day. I love it. And I appreciate everyone's time and knowledge in this room today. I'm JJ. I'm done. Thanks. Thank you, JJ. We are here to support you as well. I'm interested in it, and I'm sure my student and many people in this room are interested. Can you give us more information? How can we register? Oh, actually, I already follow your rule, but what else can we do to support you? Um, the main thing is, thank you, Temi, is to follow the club um, and invite other people in. Um, and whenever you can, if you're going to, just let people know it's coming. It is, it's not designed, no one's going to pay to be um, involved. It is purely voluntary, purely educational and to communicate. So if anyone here says, actually, I would like to be a host or I'd like to be part of a panel, just click on um, my face, go down to Cybersecurity Unicorn, which is my Instagram, and let me know. Um, and even on the club, you can see more about it. I've got some description in my profile. Some more information will come out in the coming week. I'm just finalising some ideas for topics because, um, you know, it's what I do every day. But uh, it's always nice to have a, a curated agenda of what people can expect. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be the first one, and I'll... But I'm hoping to do it four times a year um, because I think it's something we need to be able to do is demystify cyber because, in my opinion, cyber security is everyone's responsibility um, and we need to step up as uh, individuals online and say, OK, what do I need to know? How do I stay safe? What do I need to look out for scammers? So this particular topic is definitely in there, how to avoid scammers. Um, so, yeah, that's probably what you can do um, and I appreciate that. Share it around follow the club and reach out if you'd like to um, have more involvement in uh, in your particular time zone. So thank you so much, Tammy. Appreciate it. You're welcome, JJ. I already follow your room and already I send you email on Instagram. I'm ready to, you know, support whatever I can do and um, be part of the panel. So that's okay. Thank you so much for letting us know. I mean, welcome back. Uh, do you want to tell us about your room that we are starting in the next few minutes? Yeah, in 20 minutes. So there was a LinkedIn event by Google and it was titled um, How to be a product manager with no technical background. But it's still required. The way he explained it, it's still required technical background. But it was good. It was a 30 minute presentation. So I took leave to come back. So today at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you are in Nigeria, I think that's 11 p.m. If you're in California, that is 3 p.m. 
And um, yeah, so I'm going to be doing it with Gigi specifically about Amazon, Amazon interviews, the process you have to go through in order to ace the interview, a strategy in order to ace the interview. And I say this over and over again, but I've interviewed with Feng and Amazon is by far to me the most comprehensive, difficult interview you'll probably ever have in your life. And, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean it. But if you understand what they're looking for, and I think you can do well by it. So I dragged, Gigi has a very good YouTube following and a, and a large um, LinkedIn following. So I asked her one day, I stumbled upon her um, account because one of the people I was, I'm interviewing with in, in, uh, at Amazon, that's one of the companies I'm interviewing with right now, he, the manager, she, used to, she hired him. And I just did a little research, I figured, and then we talked and she said, oh my God, I hired him. And, and he highly recommends her. So if a hiring manager is saying that that's a great resource, I just went to check it out. And I, no lie, her YouTube is full of information that I genuinely think she can charge thousands of dollars for. And just a little bit about Gigi, she was an ex-Amazon bar raiser and she was an ex-Amazon leader before she left the company to start her own business. And she worked there for years, she has 20 years experience in this space. Um, she worked at Amazon for years. So a lot of leaders and management employees at Amazon, she actually hired many of them. So I asked her to come on to Clubhouse maybe about three days ago. She's now loving Clubhouse. So she's going to host a room in about 20 minutes. I'm going to be asking her questions. You can come up on stage and ask her any questions. And she will give you better insight on how to attack the end of the Amazon interview so that you can end up with an offer. That's the goal. So this will be her first room that she's hosting. She just joined Clubhouse, so please join us. If you look at the bottom of my profile here on Clubhouse, you should see the next event very at the very bottom, right before it shows you who brought me to Clubhouse. It says 6 p.m. under my club, Amazon interview, Q&A, insider advice, and we're gonna go deep into the tips. So make sure you join us in 19 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, truly, truly appreciate you. Um, we're going to round up so we can get ourselves ready for whatever next event we are going, especially that one. I'm interested in it. And that's why actually I moved my room to 4 p.m. <laughs> so that we can go there. I'm, I'm even more excited than I mean. <laughs> I'm excited for my students. I need them to hear that. So thank you. Um, so another thing I want us to point out is that we need to constantly make sure we scan our, our, our network, scan your storage. If you have storage devices, scan them. Make sure that, um, because most of the time they are prone to have uh, malware in them, but you don't know. So make sure you scan them because you might scan everything and forget the storage um, device. So scan it as well. And make sure that, um, that um, you don't, maybe you find a thumb drive on the floor or somewhere, and then you just say, oh, I found a thumb drive. It has how many gig, uh, 32 gig. Oh, wow, this is so cool. And you just stick it in on your computer and said, oh, I found it something free. Don't do that. Don't do that because you never know if it's infected or not. You never know who put it there. Or maybe you're working in a workplace and then some guys came in and said, oh, tell me, can you please quickly help me check a file. Don't do that because you don't know if it's infected. Even if all your environment are clean, everything is, there's no infection, anything, that particular drive that the guy gave you might be the one that's going to infect everything on that network. So be careful with that. Okay. Be careful. Any devices, any, uh, maybe you have a particular port on your system that is not being used, block it. If you have something for floppy or something for, I know we don't use floppy anymore. CD drive, USB. thumb drive, USB. Yeah, that's thumb drive, USB is thumb drive. If you don't use them, block them and disable them. If you have any particular, maybe you are using your system for web apps and um, um, you know you have web servers and database server and all these services and you are not using them anymore disable them so they don't use that to get into your system. All these avenues they can get it. Miss Sue, you want to chime in? Yeah, I just wanted to say, just be careful what you're sharing. Like, obviously we all know, don't share your passwords and PIN numbers. 
if you're once that gets passed and you you just the solution is to you know erase the whatsapp and you know delete it and download it again right and you'll get a new pin number but don't share that pin number with anybody right um also you don't want to share like um if you have to like um <clears throat> yeah don't don't text your pin numbers with people don't share devices um or files you want to be careful with that as well it's the same concept how i don't know if you all know how people say don't share chargers Self, like don't share cell phone charges. Well, you don't want to share. Think of, you want to be selfish. Just basically put it that way. You know, you want to be selfish with your devices and equipment. Just, that's just the easiest way to say it, right? You want to be selfish with anything that in, involves your devices, right? Um, you wouldn't share your flash drive, your USB thumb drive with people, right? Because they can have a virus too. Um, when you go out to like... Um, you know, places like public places, like, you know, all these free Wi-Fi's, you know, McDonald's and Panera Bread and Starbucks. And you see people working. Yes, it, you know, they offer you free Wi-Fi, even hotels, because I know a lot of people now, you all travel and you take your devices with you. Um, use your hotspot from your phone, okay? And use a great, a good password on your phone, you know, your mobile hotspot. Don't use the hotel's Wi-Fi. Don't use any public Wi-Fi anywhere because it's public, right? Even if they give you a password, don't use it. Even if it's free and you're paying for the hotel, you're paying for the room, you're paying for the services, don't use it. There's just some things that it's just better not to be used free, okay? Not all things that are free is good to be free, right? So, um, and now, even when you're in school, like your colleges, I wouldn't even use now that everybody have like you know we all have access to free unlimited data and stuff like that even when you're in school try as much as possible on your college campus not to use you know their whatever free web wi-fi they're giving you as a student right because it's a school it's public everyone's using it and, and you don't even want to do that anyway because a lot of times these free wi-fi you know places the, the bandwidth is so slow that you don't even want to use it. It's slow, right? So you just best to just use your own data and that's me. Wow, thank you all so much. I want to thank everybody as we're going to round up now. Uh, Amin, JJ, Azita, Iyana, C2M, uh, Anissa, and Miss Tut. Thank you all for joining us today. And for all my students, I really appreciate you all. And all everybody in the audience, thank you so much. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna go around and give us our last word or last tip or recap, and then we close on the room. I'll start like a PTR, I'll start with JJ. Um, give us our last tip and advice on, on, on uh, online security, and then we'll go to Azita and then up. Certainly, um, trust and verify. So we're trusting people Please continue to be a good trusting human um, and verify if something causes an emotional response in you, no matter what it is, just stop and think and go to the direct source yourself. Thank you very much. Great room. Thank you, Tammy and everybody. JJ and I'm done. Thank you, JJ. Azita, do you have any tip? Okay. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. I'm talking away here. Yes, definitely. I, I um, resonate with what um, J, um, JJ said. I actually um, looked up what you said because the way um, you know we kind of teach it, it, didn't call it social engineering, but Tammy, I, I thought that was very um, great to, to talk about it in that sense. I actually shared something on my Twitter. Uh, you know, how we fall and how we get people to persuade us to do the things that we don't necessarily want to do. Um, so yeah, so reciprocity, authority, all of those things, the scarcity, you know, this is a one time offer, you've got to buy it, you know, all of those things that scammers count on. Um, and yeah, trust and verify, like JJ said, definitely, and everything else that you all talked about. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Ayana, any last tip? Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Tammy. Great conversation as usual. So many great, valuable tips and gems that were shared here today. Um, this definitely was a long discussion. 
so much education is needed around cybersecurity because we just don't know, you know. Um, there's not enough professionals teaching it as well. So that, that alone tells us the need for more people to be in this field so we can all be really educated about it. Um, tip, think before you click, right? So think about the source of that information, where it's coming from, who it's coming from. Verify your source before you open that email or website or application or any type of information or data that's being shared. My name is Ayana, and I'm done speaking. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Ayana. We truly appreciate that. Think before you click. C2M, are you able to talk? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this has been a great room in terms of just reminders. So, yeah, <laughs> the common thread for me as I was listening to everyone is really just human error, right? So um, I would say, you know, if you just... Do yourself uh, the favor. I think uh, Misha, who may not be with us anymore, basically had put out this concept to do one thing every day. So I would say start thinking about all of the things that you used to log into that you don't log into anymore, whether they're all bank accounts, emails, social media. And, uh, you know, you might have stopped using them, but you might not have deactivated those accounts. So someone else may be using them. So um, even if you're not going through platforms to figure out, you know, where you might still have some active emails, just kind of, you know, remember, you know, did I, you know, do I have a Yahoo email account? Well, I probably never use that again. Should I deactivate it? And make sure you don't just stop using, but uh, deactivate those. And uh, yeah, just remember it's, um, the you know, the time you take uh, ahead of time is so much easier than the time it may take after if there's actually a breach and your data gets uh, leaked. So I'm Chris and Boss and I'm done speaking. Thank you, Christopher. I mean, Ernest. Yes, first off, happy Father's Day, Chris, and happy Thank Father's you. Day to everyone in the room, whether you, you know, your father is currently not present and is with us in spirit, and to the fathers who are present as well. So happy Father's Day to everyone. Yeah, I think my last piece of advice would be prevention is better than cure. Just all the things that were mentioned today, the two-factor notification, excuse me, authentication, all of those things matter. So if you could take time out and try to work on the administrative controls prevention, then you won't have to worry about the care after the fact. Yes, some things can be fixed, but sometimes it could be too late. So prevention is better than care. Off to you, Timmy. Professor Timmy. Thank you. I mean, that was great. Uh, Miss Anissa, you are next. And last tips? Uh, sure thing. So, first of all, thank you, Ms. Temme, for allowing me to be with you and serve the team. I really appreciate that. Um, and I think for a final tip, you know, guys, this applies to everything. It's the website. It's the emails. I mean, even down to LinkedIn, if you are looking at a profile and it feels off, just like some of the other people have mentioned, like JJ and Azita, you know, follow your instinct. If it feels off, it feels wrong, just don't do it. Um, so that's my last tip. It's Anissa and I'm complete. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Toots, your last tip. Um, I don't really have a last tip for now. I can't think of anything. I think we covered, yeah, cover the McAfee and scanning your computers, your phone, sometimes come with like a network um, security uh, app that you can scan your phone. So just get an antivirus, uh, you know, scan your uh, device. I think you mentioned that already. Right? company also does, does have its uh they have this the uh software they've already installed on your computer and a lot of time it does have, have the automatic updates um automatic scan and automatic backup so just make sure you are you know you're vigilant and you pay attention to those scan and a lot of times it's automatic but just make attention to it and um, just wanted to encourage everybody to take Professor Tammy's classes, um, PTR, and take note of her phone number and sign up for her courses. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Toots. So my last word as we close down is 
avoid the secure enough mentality. Don't say, oh yeah, I'm secured. Oh yeah, I'm okay. I don't have to do anything. Um, you are not isolated from the world. You are not, you are in the real world and you are not isolated. So just know that uh, because even big companies like um, all the, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, they invest fortune. They invest a lot of money, you know, funds on, on cybersecurity and they still get attacked. So think about yourself that you are not even close to them. You don't even invest so much. So don't think you are, don't get comfortable and complacent with your current security, um, you know, efforts. Continue to put on these best practices, and you will not fall victim of this, um, the cyber criminals online. So we thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, so once again, follow the, all the moderators and follow our tech and powerhouse. Um, every day we are here, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to come in and join us. It's one hour break into tech. And uh, every Sunday night we are here, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So I uh, thank you for joining us today. And we are off to Amin's room. And that starts in six minutes. Thank you all so much. And uh, have a blessed evening. And happy Father's Day once again to all our fathers. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye. And see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so bye. much. Thank nice you. Thank you. Bye.